And now a few thoughts and observations about the future. I think these remarks will be along the lines of winds of the change and the future of the future. And since I'm doing this as a sort of classroom presentation, I'll be using some notes as I talk with you very, very briefly. And this is my first thought. You know, working, living, and competing in what I call a billion mind economy means that one has to rethink certain things. You have to rethink uh, how you love, rethink how you live, rethink how you work, and also rethink how you learn. And that particularly applies to the individual as well as to the organization to which you belong. I would like to assert to you that the enterprise of the future will be very different from the enterprise of today. A living, working, the learning environment in the future all are converging in an unprecedented way. In the last century, uh, these environments that we live in, that we work in, that we love in, were intentionally kept apart. Family issues were left at home and almost never discussed at work, at least not outside the lunchroom or perhaps around the water cooler. The work environment of the yesterday was designed in linear assembly line fashion. You work your way up the ladder. You watch your vesting and your leave balances accumulate, somewhat just like your frequent, mi frequent flyer miles accumulate. Uh, not much changed as we move from the industrial age to the now information age. That same factory production mentality was applied in various ways. It was applied to software, uh, to health care, to legislation, to litigation, and just about anything that could be boxed and packaged into a system. Learning took place in a classroom. Students sat in desks that made an economy class seat on today's airlines perhaps look like the back of a stretch limousine. Students in that classroom would read chapter one the first week. They would answer the odd numbered questions and then the class moved on to chapter two. At the end of chapter three, the students would have a sequenced examination covering those first two chapters. Everything was arranged in a sequence. You took biology one year. You took chemistry the next year. You took physics the next year. You took it in that sequence because that's how they were arranged in alphabetical order. And when you completed enough courses, what did you do? You graduated. Well, that was then. I would ask the question, where are we now? Let's fast forward to the knowledge age that we are very much a part of now. More of your work today takes place at home. Much of your learning takes place at work. And for those who still commute, family life is becoming more closely integrated with work life. And that shows up in benefits at the work site, ranging from on-site dependent care to health and wellness programs to counseling services, even to scholarships for employees and their dependents, like the BKM Wright Lasseter Scholarship. Even colleges and universities are changing, or at least they are helping, to change the office now into a learning environment. An example being at various colleges, they are offering evening classes in the same conference room as you had the morning staff meeting in. Or you may be having a class on the same desktop, laptop, or PDA as your virtual staff meeting was held. There's a growing demand for courses on learning how to learn growing demand for courses on how to deal with novelty and creative problem solving. You see, today's knowledge workers have a boundaryless mindset. Bosses, however, with an assembly line mentality will not get their phone calls returned. Recent trends show that work is migrating to the worker rather than vice versa. 
And today, knowledge workers are much more discriminating about what they do and for whom they do it with. You see, you can live, you can work, you can learn virtually anywhere. You can do this at the office, at the coffee shop, at the, at the airport lounge, or even if you have one, even your beach house. For me, it is my car. When I'm moving from one location to another location in our district, I always have an electronic book in my CD player so that I can take advantage of that time to read and reflect. Well, the bottom line is that organizations are no longer focused strictly on working while ignoring living and learning. I believe the enterprise of the future must bring all three together, work, living, and learning. Uh, living means loving what you do and finding fulfillment in it. Working means doing what you love in a way that is both challenging and rewarding. And learning means continually making new discoveries and putting those discoveries to work both personally and professionally. In essence, you and your organization and your extended network they are now codependent, and for the individual, your ability to grow is limited if your organization and if your network are not working together. Likewise, at the individual level, if you are not growing, you are inhibiting the growth of the organization to which you belong. Today, one must think brain trust as opposed to assembly line. And that brings me to the final question, where are we going? Meeting the intellectual and creative challenges of the 21st century demands using every ounce of creativity that is available. That means building and sustaining a creative environment. This creative environment of yourself, your associates, your work setting, and your family. And as a knowledge worker, as most of us are, you need time to think. You need time to innovate. You need time to experience. You need time to create. And you can't do that in the offices and the work settings that were designed for a bygone era, an era where those work settings were loaded with stress, with distractions, and interruptions. And the same goes for our neighborhoods. That is why environment is more important than ever on all fronts. And let me now share with you a little exercise that I came across a couple of years ago. It's an exercise that I found interesting. I would ask each of you to start putting together a list of old, worn out, industrial age baggage that you can shed. Uh, these albatrosses, as I call them, are dragging you down. Those albatrosses are holding you back. Those albatrosses are stressing you out, draining not only your productivity, but also your creativity as well. And as you do this, don't forget to look around for any junk food that may be lying around, junk food both physical and mental. And now ask yourself this question. Has the growth in your well-being kept pace with the growth in your paycheck. You will always need money, but maybe not as much money as you thought. You see, in a knowledge economy, there are many different forms of capital, including relationships, a knowledge, and your own personal brand. In the final analysis, it all boils down to this. What does your work, life, balance sheet look like? Well, based on the answers to those questions, look at how your living, how your working, and how your learning environment needs to change. Then start whittling away. Better yet, go ahead if you choose to and put an ax to your cubicle. I'm saying ax figuratively rather than to do that realistically. And after doing so, you may now pick up your boarding pass to the enterprise of the future. 
And when you do this, I would say, welcome to the world 3.0. Well, once again, thank you for the opportunity to share these thoughts and opinions in this electronic format.